Hello, dear friends. Today we are going to learn about a drama thriller film called House of Chains from 2022. I wish you a good viewing. The film opens with River McGrath sneaking out of her room in the middle of the night to feed her brother Prairie, who is handcuffed to a pipe in the barn. Then River, grabbing his younger brother Forrest and making sure his parents are asleep, goes downstairs to the first floor. There, they unscrew the bolts on the window latch and get out. The children run down the street, but their parents chase after them. The story moves forward 12 years. Laura, an expectant mother, is traveling by bus to a gathering place for the homeless where Ty, her future husband and father of the children, is preaching. Ty sees a homeless man take Laura into a tent, promising her a dose of illegal substances in exchange for her services. Ty defends Laura by beating the stranger. He convinces Laura not to return home, claiming that it was her parents who put her in this situation. The next time we see them, they are a happy McGrath family with several children and another on the way. Because of their specific religious upbringing, the older children are outcasts at school. Only the newest girl, Andrea, decides to make friends with them. At lunch, she notices that the McGrath children eat very little and offers them sweets, but they refuse, saying that less food means more space for the soul. After school, the McGrath children persuade their mother to allow them to invite Andrea to visit, which she reluctantly agrees to. At home, during a game of hide and seek, Andrea hides in her parents' bedroom, where there is a TV that the children are not allowed to watch. When the guest turns it on, her older brother Rain tries to take the remote control and turn off the TV, but her father appears. After escorting Andrea out, Ty reprimands his wife for letting the girl into the house and backs up his words with force. River tells her mother that she needs to see a doctor, but Laura refuses, afraid that the doctor will poison her with chemicals, as he did in her youth. The next day, the parents announce that the children will no longer go to school to avoid the devil's temptations. Little Prairie says that this is stupid and that he wants to go back to school, the only place free from parental control. Ty convinces his wife that Prairie has succumbed to temptation and must be punished. Laura doesn't want to hit her son, but is forced to obey. Despite the fact that River stands up for his brother, the stress provokes Laura to go into labor, which Ty delivers at home. After the birth of his son, Forrest, Ty has another religious epiphany. He believes that his younger brother will become a great pastor. He puts locks on the doors, telling the children that only he and his mother are allowed to leave the house. Laura supports her husband, claiming that all people outside are evil and only their family are true servants of God. Now their task is to protect Forrest, even at the cost of their own lives. A few more years pass like this. Ty gathers the family to punish Prairie for the open window. When Forrest stands up for his brother, he gets a slap from his mother. Laura beats Prairie with a belt and then ties him to the bed. While the father is at work, the children are busy studying. River is studying math with her younger sister Summer, but the girl is too hungry to concentrate. Summer and Forrest wonder why their mother keeps them hungry when there is plenty of food in the house. At night, River and Forrest steal apples from the kitchen and feed the chained up Prairier and her sisters. Only Rain refuses to eat, calling the apple a symbol of the fall. In the morning, Ty discovers the apples are missing and begins to question the children, trying to find out who broke the commandment, thou shalt not steal. The parents promise to give the phone to the one who exposes the thief, proving their loyalty and honesty. But even so, no one confesses. Ty decides to punish Summer. To save her sister, Rain gives up Forrest and River, who are tied to the staircase railing, not even letting them go to the bathroom. The parents give their older children smartphones. At night, Prairier chews through the ropes and tries to free Forrest and River, but his father wakes up. The boy tries to escape through the window, but Ty catches him and chains him to the bed with iron chains. While his father puts additional locks on the doors and windows, Rain watches a video on his phone under the covers. Rain shows the video to his sister, where the boy is playing the guitar, and his sister says that she likes to play the guitar too. On the third day, the punishment ends, and the mother unties the children, although they already have wounds on their legs. Afterwards, the father treats the children to cake, but only those who have behaved well. Rain records a video of River playing a song on the guitar to post on the internet. At night, her sister wakes River up, saying that a guy named Tristan saw her video of the song and wants to talk to her. Rain gives her sister a smartphone so she can talk to him. Frightened by the boy's attention, the girl soon breaks off the conversation. The next day, Rain reports that Tristan has sent many messages and wants to talk again. At night, River talks to him again while sitting in the closet. The boy tells him that he has a rare immune disease that keeps him in a confined space. When asked why River is also confined, the girl does not want to answer. Laura accidentally overhears the conversation. Seeing that her husband is getting up, she calls her daughter to help her in the kitchen. Soon, Forrest's stomach starts to hurt, but since he can't wash without permission, his mother punishes him. Prairie yells at her to stop, and his father takes off his chains and takes him out of the room. The girls cling to each other in fear, and Rain is silent in shame. Later, a crying river contacts Tristan again. 
When she tells him various stories from her life and how her parents starved them to death to strengthen their bodies because of their weakness, he advises her to call the police, despite her father's words that demons and devils serve there. Since River does not want to call for help, the boy offers to do it for her, but he needs to know the address. The girl recalls her sister's advice that the devil can't do harm through the phone until he knows where she lives. She calls Tristan the devil. At this moment, the father opens the closet door and sees the obvious violation of the regime. As a punishment, he handcuffs them to a pipe in the pantry, where Prairie is already suffering from stomach pain, and Forrest is also bedridden. Ten days pass before the mother fast-forwards the calendar a few days. In honor of the holiday, the prisoners are released, all except the rebel Prairie. While the family decorates the tree in the room, River worries about Forrest's health. She tells her father that her brother needs medication, but he prefers alternative medicine, trusting recipes from the Bible. They make the boy sick, but he does not get better. The sisters diagnose him with appendicitis. At the holiday table, River talks about his fears, which makes his father furious. He plans to make them starve until Forrest recovers and takes the plate of cookies off the table. Summer manages to grab one cookie, and her father throws her to the floor and handcuffs her to the bed after the Christmas party. Realizing that delaying could cost her brother his life, River plans an escape. She convinces Rain to help her get a screwdriver because her parents trust him and allow him to use tools. To be on the safe side, she makes her brother swear on the Bible that he won't tell his parents. However, the night the plan goes into action, Rain wakes up his parents to confess everything. Ty and Laura go outside, chasing the children. They manage to hide on the roof of a neighbor's garage and then go to the nearest church. They are knocking on a closed door when a police patrol spots them. Convinced by years of religious propaganda that policemen are devils, the children do not trust the patrol officers. However, River confesses that she had a divine vision in which she was supposed to take her brother to the doctor. The patrolman assumes that she is crazy and has kidnapped the child, but does not rule out that there is some truth in her words. When they take Forrest away by force, he says, out of fear, that they were just playing, and now he wants to go home. His parents arrive at the church. Ty tells the cops that her daughter made up a ridiculous game, taking her brother out at night on various missions. The cops ask the girl if the brother and father are telling the truth. Seeing that the sick Forrest does not support her, River agrees that it is just a game and gets into the car. Back at home, Ty tells his wife to pack up their belongings and the children, because they are moving to the desert so that enemies won't know where to look for them, and they also remove unnecessary locks from the doors and windows so as not to leave any traces of imprisonment. Suddenly, Forrest screams in pain, but when his parents come into the bathroom, he says that his father was right because the devil's poison has left his body, and now he is not in pain. A patrolman and a juvenile officer, Ms. Sterling, knock on the door, wanting to make sure the children are okay. After asking for a moment, the father warns the children that their faith is about to be severely tested, and then lets the strangers in. They see the well-kept appearance of the house and ask about the bathroom. Rain faithfully lies that there were problems with the pipes, but they will be fixed soon. Forrest feels worse again and goes to the bathroom with his sisters. When the guests want to check the second floor, Ty says that it is being renovated, and he won't let them in without a flashlight and a search warrant. Rain and her mother go out to check on Forrest while Ty sees the guests off. Forrest's temperature rises, and Laura searches for symptoms, learning that a ruptured appendix temporarily relieves pain, but leads to sepsis. Laura orders the children to call 911, but the father comes in and takes the phone away. He says they need to leave. His wife persuades him to put his son in an ice bath first to bring his temperature down. Ty gathers the family to leave. The girls ask to call an ambulance, and even Rain takes their side. Ty kicks his son in front of the frightened family, trying to make him angry, but after that even his wife refuses to obey her husband's orders. Then Ty grabs a knife and threatens Rain, saying that God ordered Abraham to sacrifice his son. Prairie cuts the duct tape that ties his hands, attacks his father, and takes the knife away. The three of them, along with Rain, hold their father down on the floor while calling the emergency services. Laura orders River to run outside and call for help, which she does, interrupting the quiet dawn in the suburbs with screams. In the next scene, the children watch a report on TV as Forrest is taken away in critical condition by paramedics, and their father is arrested for multiple felonies, along with the children's mother as an accomplice. Ms. Sterling enters the room, saying that Forrest has fallen into a coma. Soon a detective appears who needs to take statements from the children, otherwise the parents will be released. Summer is silent, and Rain takes his father's side. Prairie honestly tells how it all happened. His father forced his mother to beat them, and also locked them in a closet. His testimony is devalued by the fact that he starts saying something strange. With such testimony, the prosecution fails to bring charges. That leaves Meadow and River. The girl says she trusts her sister and supports everything she says. The detective warns River that she is the last person who can influence the situation, otherwise her parents will be released. But she refuses to say anything, claiming that the devil controls her words. 
Ms. Sterling tells River that Tristan is trying to reach her. She confesses to the boy that Forrest was hurt because of her, or because she disobeyed her parents, and now it's too late. The girl, in moral anguish, does not dare to testify against her parents because it is against the Bible. Tristan advises her to talk to her mother, who also disobeyed her husband to save her son, and maybe she can help her make the right decision. River, Meadow, and Rain go to meet the mother to decide what to do. She admits that they have not taught their children the Bible passages that say that they do not have to obey their parents in everything. Laura suggests that they, the parents, might be the devil they warned their children about, and she even hisses to make her point. At the trial, Laura addresses the judge. It is clear from her speech that the parents have been convicted, and the children have returned to normal as far as possible. Even Forrest has come out of his coma. But the girl justifies her mother, calling her the first victim of her father, who could not extinguish the fire in their souls with his poisonous breath.